But nevertheless, here's what I want to focus on today. And I just want to have an open sort of dialogue and conversation about, um, we want to talk about the way you guys dress. And the way you dress and the way your peers dress and why you wear what you wear and why what you wear is cool, lit, swag, whatever. In fact, what word do you guys use to describe how, how you all dress today? Because it used to be swag. Like a year ago it was swag. I don't know if swag is still cool. It's on fleet? It's still fleet? Okay. Is it fleet or fleet with a K? It's fleet. Without the K? Anything else you guys use? Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you guys this worksheet, right? You don't necessarily need a pen or, or a pencil because you can kind of just look at this. And we're going to go through these series of questions. I'm just curious to get some feedback from you. So when you think of somebody who's popular right now as an artist, who comes to your mind today? Fab. Fab? OK. What is, what is Fab's wardrobe typically look like? Right. Okay. You said okay. jean jackets and a hoodie? Yeah. Okay. If you had a gift card right now, unlimited, that you could go to Evelyn's or anywhere in the mall, finish line, foot line, what would you get? Jordan's? Like, what else? Who else would you think of? Nick Young? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what makes Swaggy P have swag? Like the way you like, the way you call Okay. So when you guys see each other, you out, you're doing whatever. When you dress, however you dress, do you know people in other social environments outside of school where you see somebody be like, yo, they got swag, but they don't got jean jackets, they don't got Jordans. No? You can't have swag if you don't got the clothes? No? That's what swag is like. Okay. Wait, so you guys wear uniforms here, right? Yeah. Okay. So. How, somebody give me an example. How do you express your individuality, even within the confines of your uniform that you have to do? Well, what you add on to it, I mean, the way you style your hair and your shoes, basically. Okay, okay. So how you style your shoe, how you style your hair or your shoes? What, what's your first name? Savion. Savion? Yeah. Okay. So I can't help but notice you have on two different kinds of socks. So tell me why you choose to do that. Okay. Okay. So what happens if on Monday when you come back to school, everybody's wearing dark socks? Well, I'm gonna put y'all on. <laughs> okay. So on Tuesday, would you do the same thing? I'm just saying, I'll put y'all on. I'll oh. So they all following you then at, at yeah. that point. So I I'm asking you, you to set a trend, yeah. and then would you continue to wear it? Yeah. Okay. And I'm setting new Yeah, that's a perfect sandwich. Okay, let me put it. We're going to watch a, a video. It's called Merchants of Cool. And I'm not going to give you any other explanation about it because the video sort of speaks for itself. We look for kids who are ahead of the pack because they're going to influence what all the other kids do. We look for the 20%, the trendsetters, that are going to influence the other 80%. Gordon and Lee have put together a team of what they call correspondents all young, all former cool kids themselves. A correspondent is a person who has been trained by us to be able to find a certain kind of kid, a kid that we call a trendsetter or an early adopter. This is a kid who's very forward in their thinking, who looks outside their own backyard for inspiration, who is a leader within their own group. So what this correspondent does is they go out and they like find and identify these trendsetting kids they interview them, they get them interested in um, what we do. They send all that stuff in, we look at it, we compile it, we look for trends or themes that are happening through all the information and that's the stuff that we put on our website. For a subscription fee of $20,000 each, companies are granted access to the Look Look website, a Rosetta Stone of teen culture. If companies can get in on a trend or subculture while it is still underground, they can be the first ones to bring it to market. And that's when the mass consumer picks up on it and runs with it and then eventually kills it. And that's the paradox of cool hunting. It kills what it finds. As soon as marketers discover cool, it stops being cool. There's no kind of solution to this. You can't ever solve the puzzle permanently. 
by by having by discovering cool you, cool you force cool to move on to the next That's interesting right so what they were considering cool is they were looking for unique trends that are different from everybody else that stands out, right? So they might say, Save me that's kind of dope. How you wear the socks like that and you add your own flavor to it. Can we take a picture of that? Now that might be yours as an individual, right? But you see what they do. They take that information and then they bring it mainstream. So now, maybe somebody's like, I don't really know about that. But then you see them in an ad and then you see an athlete wearing it or you see it in a commercial and you be like, that's what I need to do. So then that becomes the norm, and now everybody starts to do that, and then once people start to catch on, they kill it. They kill it. It's no longer cool. I'll give you a perfect example. They use Jordans. Jordans is the perfect example, because a pair of Jordans will come out, right, the new Jordans. When did the last new Jordans come out? Saturday. The ones that came out before that came out when? How many months or weeks ago? Like a week or two. They put them out on the market. Everyone goes crazy. People stand in line all night, which is just crazy to me. Um, people camp out two days, stand, stand in line, just to get a pair of sneakers that everybody else in that line is going to get. So it's really nothing unique about what you did. You really didn't separate your swag from anybody else. You already got the same swag. So how much would it cost to be, to be on fleet? How much would it cost? Like he said, he gives you a gift card unlimited. How much would you have to spend to have your best outfit, the best outfit you could imagine. How much would it cost? How much? At least three hundred. Four. At least a thousand. What would you get? Tell me what you would get. So let me ask you. A new pair of J's cost about what? Two to two twenty, right? Okay. I heard you say trues, right? You talking about jeans? How much they cost? My size is seventy dollars. How much? Seventy dollars. Seventy dollars. What else? What else would, what, what would your top, what would you wear? I'm getting a belt. Okay, <laughs> the Louis V belt? Yeah. Okay, how much is the belt? Like, okay. Yeah. Why, why Louis V? <laughs> That's the best outfit. Is it really? Yeah, Because nah. I got Everybody a belt from Burlington that I have for six years. And I can wear it every day. All those colors match my clothes. I'll just ask, because who wears a Louis V belt? It's just because it's expensive. You just. You know you got money that way. It's design price. Okay. So you got the belt? You got the belt? You got the belt? No, $300. $300. $300 for a belt? What was your time belt? Absolutely. What does it do? You take a shower by yourself? What was your pants up? Barely. Okay. So you got the belt. What else? What about for a top? Like a jacket? Sure. Yeah. Like a jacket? Sure. What kind of shirt? What kind? So you mentioned your fabulous, right? So he used to wear a bunch of throwback jerseys back in the day, right? So you said hoodies. Like what kind of hoodie might he wear? How much would that cost about? Okay, how much would it cost? Yeah. Go for it. So you're going to get a pair of shoes that cost $220, jeans that cost $70 because that's your size, and then you're going to get a Louis, v, uh, a Louis Vuitton belt that costs $300. But you gonna wear a twenty dollar hoodie? That's a. Oh, we gave you an unfair. No, no, no. I don't like. But it's still gonna look. It's still gonna be swag at the end of the day. Okay, got you, got you. Okay, I just want to Since this card is unlimited and it's for the mall, what cell phone would you got? iPhone seven. iPhone seven. Yeah, well, that's okay. like eight hundred dollars right okay. there. Okay. All right, but like eight hundred, right? So before the seven, there was a what? Six and then, S. And then a six. Actually, it was it? Wait, what was the S E? Right. See, not your nose, right? And then it was a what? Six. Before that, it was a what? Six. You see where we're going? And how often do they come out? Every year. Uh, and how much do they cost? Every time? Eight hundred. Seven, eight hundred dollars. So if you have these, right, with your unlimited card, you'd be like, yo, killing me right now, right? But guess what? The other folks in the group, or maybe in your neighborhood, feel the same way. So are you really expressing your individuality, or are you? And are your choices really your choices? I guess that's the takeaway piece that we were talking about. Okay, how, how much are our numbers come say? So $1,410. Who can tell me what the minimum wage is in the state of Connecticut? Look it up, Nacho, you got a phone. Minimum wage in Connecticut. Minimum wage in Connecticut. Any adults know? Nine. Nine fifty. Nine dollars and sixty cents. Nine sixty, one up ten cents. So, divide how many hours you would have to work at an entry-level job to get this one outfit. 147 hours 
To so work at a job, lifting, carrying, punching, punch out, Ooh, little break a to get this. That ain't worth it. To look like everybody else. That's really Think about it. So, so let me so let me throw another scenario at you. How many of you were shot from a thrift store? Okay. Anybody else? That someone with a with a keen sense of fashion could take a hundred of these dollars and come out of there with probably two outfits that to me would have far more swag than what you would get out of this. <laughs> so I'm just going to ask the adults or the older folks in the room. Do you do you buy it? Yeah. yeah. Do you buy that? I go to DJ Max. Thank okay. you. Okay. 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 So, because here's the thing. I, I just want to point this out to you. Swag. I think for your generation, and it's not a knock on your generation. I think sometimes you guys associate swag with this and this and I guess this. You all got to have this to have swag. I would imagine. But but I point this out just to say that it's how you put it together. Because if you can find a twenty dollar hoodie. You can find some $30 jeans, you can find a $12.99 belt, though. and the point that I'm really trying to get at is if you don't buy labels and you buy clothes that are good quality and you take care of them, you could always have swag, you could always look good, you could always save money. That's the point that we're trying to make. And the biggest thing is, where, why do you feel like you have to have this? And why are you less than a person if you don't have this? So if you could buy that same outfit similar for seven hundred dollars instead of fourteen hundred you would buy the same exact stuff because I gotta see how it would look. And I respect yeah. that. Okay. I'm not saying you're wrong. Mm -hmm. I think we're just trying to get you to stretch your brain a little bit right. about the value of money. Right. And about the fact that people market certain things to you that make you feel like if you don't have it, you're less than the guy next to you because he has it. That's the point that we're trying to make. You're no less than a person. Like if I'm next to somebody and I see somebody, I'm like, oh man, them Gucci loafers, them Gucci loafers is tight. I don't feel like I gotta run and get them because he got them. Or I don't feel like I'm any less than that individual because he got Gucci loafers. I like them. I might want them, but I'm gonna go to the Gucci store and, and see that they cost seven hundred and fifty dollars and say I'm gonna stick with my Kenneth Coles mm -hmm. that cost one hundred and twenty. You don't have to spend a hundred. I mean, one thousand four hundred and ten dollars to have swag. But given an opportunity, you guys will spend one thousand four hundred and ten dollars to have swag. So based on, based on that quick video that we watched, based on some of the information that Mr. Starworth and I just discussed, do you guys feel like you're being exploited? Be honest. They are because they're not getting any payment or anything for what you're okay. doing. You're just starting a trend, and you started that for free, and then they're getting, they're making all of this money off of it. And then you started. Oh yeah, wait. Like, but like basically, copyright you're taking what you started and you're going to do it. I, I would say that you guys are certainly being exploited. Marketing firms spend marketing towards you guys to force you to buy things that you really, really don't need. So, if you go to the store and you take that rainbow O's or toasty O's and you take that box of Fruit Loops and you turn the boxes around and you look at the ingredients, pound for pound, it's the same exact ingredients. Same exact ingredients, right? It might be a little twang to the left, to the side, whatever. It's the same thing. But you know why one's $3 or one's $1.99 and one is $5.99? Because it has that mascot on it. And they advertise on TV and on commercials and all these other places. So you make that connection. It's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. And that's something that we call brand loyalty. And especially if you've had it ever since you were young and you can identify with it, when you get older, you tend to buy the same products. Because you have Marketers influence you to pull and tug on your parents to say, buy me this, buy me this, buy me this. And between the ages of 12 to 18, you guys spend more money than any other age range. So they know they got to get you. Because if they get you, they got your parents, and that's where the money is. And then, this is the last term I would like to introduce you, and I'll turn it back over to Mr. Gay. It's called disposable income. So basically what that means is after you have your bills paid and all that stuff, the amount of disposable income you have, your target demographic, your age range, has the most disposable income out of everybody. 
for all the reasons you mentioned. Because you don't work, but you have money because your parents give it to you. So you're not paying for a car note or insurance or any of those things. So we don't have to get to the parents with the money. They're going to get to the kids because your parents love you or at least like you a lot. Right? <laughs> so they're going to buy you the things that you ask for because that makes you happy and makes them happy. So it's not just by accident or coincidence that folks are being targeted in many, many ways. It's intention. Can I just say one thing before we go? Sure. Uh, first, I, I want to thank Dr. Gay and, and, and the team um, for coming and what they're doing with you all. What they're doing is making you think, okay? Making you think. And it makes all the difference in the world. And also, what they really want you to do is not to follow the crowd, okay? Exactly. Uh, not to follow the crowd. Uh, if you are going to be truly successful in the world, you got to be different. You got to work hard. You got to think, okay? And then you got to not follow the crowd. That's the key to being successful in the world. And I just can't tell you how much I appreciate what they're doing for you. So you guys, if you like this fun, you just kind of soak it up, okay? Well, thank you. Three. Welcome, Welcome to reality. reality.